my name is Samir and I am the studio manager for this particular program, Distance Education. Uh, so no, I'm, today I am not talking as a uh, studio manager, today I will be talking to you as uh, end user, like what Professor said. So you guys are here to ask me questions so that you can prepare a good SRS document. So, so you already know the slide what you saw last, right? What are the requirements of an SRS document? So, <coughs> based on that, I'll, I'll start my requirement as to uh, what should be the software giving me at the end of the day when, whenever it is delivered. Uh, if you see, this is the website of uh, the project which I, which I handle and uh, we conduct courses which will be released in open source at the end of the post production what we do on that. And we want the users of this, uh, typically the users of these courses would be uh, engineering college students, postgraduate students or the faculty who will be teaching these courses in uh, their subsequent classes uh, in their respective organizations. Now uh, what we feel is uh, we actually went around and saw a lot of uh, organizations and uh, discussed with the faculty there the problems what they had and the common issue was uh, less availability of faculty. So people have to rely on uh, books and uh, whatever course material available from other resources and if they use that they can do the teaching far more better. Now while doing that availability of such material is also very limited. And wherever it is available, it is available in a closed source format. So you cannot possibly use it and directly copy paste it into your own course. Also it doesn't uh, suit the purpose of the curricula what, what is there all across. So all over India it's not the same curricula for wireless networks as it is taught in IIT Bombay or maybe Anna University in uh, the south. So that is major bottleneck. So people have to take out chunks from uh, different course material available whatever they have on their hand. So it finally becomes like 10 books and some slides and couple of websites everything put together to make one course of their own. In that uh, we found out that if we release our courses in open source that will not only enable them to give it as it is but at the same time they will be able to modify it themselves because we release these courses under creative commons license and which says that it is released under attribution 2.5 which means if you can just <coughs> take the courses, modify it, attribute it to the person who has done it uh, in the beginning and use it in your own name. We don't mind even if you put it in your name later on release it again but it has to be attributed to the person who has created it for the first time. So that is the model. So if you go to the website you will see <coughs> some of the workshops which were already conducted and uh, you can view or download can see there are some like nearly 600 times it has been uh, accessed but that can be false because maybe 300 times we only did it but uh, that's okay. So idea what I wanted to show you was uh, we have given this view and download. So download enables person to get all the lectures of uh, okay. So <coughs> this particular screen will appear at the time when you say view download which will have all the lectures given in that particular program of maybe cell B programming which was conducted by IBM and the creators of that particular course didn't uh, hesitate in putting it in open source because they thought it will be beneficial if people understand it more. Now there are these 10 lectures here. If you see the size of the lectures is like ranging from 20 MB to 110 MB and it is deliberately done in a different format which I am coming later. So that the size of the complete lectures is, uh, I can tell you it is approximately 8 hours of material. So if you go to a video CD kind of lecturing system, it will take 1 CD per hour and uh, or 1 DVD per hour of very high quality video. But the point was we didn't want them to have high quality video because then that is not useful in terms of transferring the data from. So 8 DVDs becomes really cumbersome thing to handle and the data becomes very difficult to carry. So <clears throat> the format which we have chosen is something like this. So the idea why we zeroed down to this was in a, in a typical classroom like this when you are sitting here and somebody is 
teaching from the podium it is your discrete decision where to uh, concentrate on you can concentrate on the face of the person you can concentrate on the slides what have been already given or you can browse through the slides which are already there and you can just go ahead and see what is coming up next kind of thing so it is actually completely the discretion of the student and if we make a video cd then it is uh, taken away from the person because it has to go linearly it will play from 0 1 to 1 hour and you have to if you forward you may skip something important you just have to go back and forth and so you finally don't get to the point where you want to be so here what we have done is <coughs> this is the interface is divided into three areas basically one is the video area which is actually a very small size stamp size what we call it because we thought it's not required more than this size just to keep the attention span of the student glued to the screen uh, this particular is area is the slide what uh, the faculty was using and this is the table of contents of all the slides which were used during that lecture. Now this enables the viewer to click on a particular slide and the video will start from that point onwards. Okay, so as you can see if you hover onto this particular uh, point you will see that it is uh, having a duration of 35 seconds. So after 35 seconds, the slide will change like this and the uh, speaker has moved on to the next slide, which is already known just by hovering it on to the particular point. And we can just skip through lot of slides what we don't want and just go to Linux kernel support and start the video and audio and the lecture from that point onwards. So this we thought was a very good way of transmitting so that uh, the end user is really making use of the portions what he or she wants to use of. So that is the whole idea. Now, the problem statement. All this is done in a proprietary software called Microsoft Producer. It has its own limitations. Now, the moment we say this is open source, we allow people to download this. Now, in Vishakapatnam, suppose wireless networks is taught or uh, cell B programming is taught along with some portions of maybe uh, software engineering or wireless network or something. They want to mix up these two things. In between lecture number 6 or 6 and 7, they want to insert one more lecture. Or maybe within the lecture 6, they want to insert some more slides. Currently, that is possible only if you have a licensed copy of Microsoft Producer, which is right now putting a stop on all this open source activity what we are mentioning. So what happens is people download this, but they cannot tune it to their requirements. And they have to again go back to some proprietary thing to play it. Problem number 2, even if uh, we just release it and people say we don't want to edit it, we'll take it as it is. This thing currently doesn't run on anything except Windows. It requires Internet Explorer, it requires Windows Media Player and all these dependencies make it only narrowing down it to the Windows user group. That is problem number two. So we thought we need a software which will take care of all these problems. So that is how the problem statement has started. Additionally, we have some more requirements into this. <coughs> See, apart from uh, the slide, uh, I'll also tell you one more important feature of this. As you can see, in a particular video CD, you can see the slides in a video format. So they come as an image. Uh, it is inserted into a video like you see here. So it will be an image of that slide. Unlike that, here in uh, output of producer you can go and select into this slides area because it is a soft copy of that it is a html coded page now so you can as a person who wants to take only this slide from here can easily copy this from here and then paste it onto his own machine which is also an additional advantage we thought so now looking into all these issues we wanted a new software so new software should do the following it should be <coughs> opening up on any os it should take any format of presentation. Currently, this guy is only taking PowerPoint. It is not taking PDF. It is not taking PS or anything else. <coughs> the video is Windows Media. So uh, in our new software, we would like any video to be incorporated. It can be FLV. It can be AVI. It can be MPEG. All sorts of video. It can be a webcam. So because we are expecting that anybody who will, would like to edit that may not have the sophisticated equipment what we have here. So it should not say that it is not able to do that. To the extent that somebody will say, I will go away with the video. I don't want video. 
I'll just put a photograph of the faculty in one corner. That is enough for me to get inspiration from. And I'll put the audio continuously. So that, that is also one requirement which should be possible. So we don't want a moving picture there. We just put a photograph there. And the audio continues, which is also good enough. <coughs> that is point number three. Fourth area is, apart from the slides and the video, uh, we thought if we have one more area here marked, which will show some hyperlinks uh, or some additional reading material for the person to, to just view it or copy paste it, uh, like we have additional uh, books to be read on certain courses. So we may have some area where we can just keep on typing things so that they can just see it, especially on particular slides which will need more attention. Or some, um, um, something which is not included in the slide, but we want to have maybe a problem discussed at that particular slide given in terms of a textual input format in that particular area which is marked for maybe additional interaction, what we can call it maybe. So that is also one of the requirements. And finally, when I look into this, uh, currently we have an issue that this is taking only lecture 1, 2, 3, 4 as names. We should be able to browse through, if we put a search button here, it should be able to go into each slide and tell me, suppose I only want to see Linux kernel slides in this entire program of 10 lectures, I should be able to search that. And I should be able to get those 10 slides or what are 12 slides from wherever they are in these 10 lectures. And I should be able to view them accordingly. Like we see Google pages coming up, there are 10 searches available, 10 results of the search. You can go and see whatever you want. So that is additional feature. So that will limit or extend this use of this because you don't have to go through again 10 lectures. Even if you have to, suppose I have, today I have to see where is Linux kernel arriving now. So I have to go to lecture number one, see that the table of contents there and then I will be able to see it. So that is, that is a bottleneck. That is it.